uh, thank you, ActionAid, for inviting me to your course on cooperatives. And today's uh, address uh, of mine is on the international cooperative movement. Let me begin by uh, giving a brief about the International Cooperative Alliance and the International Cooperative Alliance Asia and Pacific. So the International Cooperative Alliance was founded in London, in England, on 19th of August, 1895, during the first Cooperative Congress. And as we speak, as we are here today, the ICA is uh, observing its 33rd Cooperative Congress in Seoul, Korea. So in attendance, back in 1895, in attendance were delegates from cooperatives from Argentina, Australia, Belgium, England, Denmark, France, Germany, Holland, India, Italy, Switzerland, Serbia, and the US. So India was one of the founding members of the ICA back in 1895. Representatives at the Congress established the ICA's aims to provide information, define and defend the cooperative principles and develop international trade. ICA as the apex body for cooperatives today represents 3 million cooperatives globally. It provides a global voice and forum for knowledge, expertise, and coordinates action for and about cooperatives. I see Asia and Pacific, from where I am, is based in New Delhi, of the IC. The other three regional offices are in Kenya, uh, Europe, Brussels, Belgium, uh, Costa Rica, and Costa Rica. I see Asia and Pacific was established in 1960 by Jawaharlal Nehru, and it unites, promotes, and develops cooperatives in the Asia and Pacific region. Today, our regional office represents 113 member organizations from 31 countries in this region as of July 2021. Let me present to you a brief history of cooperatives in the world and in our Asia-Pacific region. The earliest record of a cooperative comes from Scotland, where in 1761, in a barely furnished cottage, local weavers manhandled, manhandled a sack of oatmeal into John Walker's whitewashed front room and began selling the contents at a discount, forming the Fenwick Weaver Society. This cost of you can skip, this is not that relevant, but the coming one is more relevant. In 1844, a group of 28 artisans working in the cotton mills in the town of Rochdale in the north of England established the first modern cooperative business, the Rochdale Equitable Pioneer Society, also known as the Rochdale, as the prototype of the modern cooperative society and founders of the cooperative movement. The weavers in these cotton mills in Rochdale faced miserable working conditions and low wages, and they could not afford the high prices of food and household goods. So they decided that by pooling their scarce resources and working together, they could access basic goods at lower price. Initially, there were only four items for sale, flour, oatmeal, sugar, and butter. Later on, the pioneers decided that it was time for shoppers that they be treated with honesty, openness, and respect, and that they should be able to share in the profits that their custom contributed to, and that they should have a democratic right to have a say in the business. By shoppers, they mean the consumers. Every customer of the shop became a member and so had a true stake in the business. At first, the cooperative was open for only two nights a week, but within three months, the business grew and it uh, became open for five days a week. Now, coming to the Asia Pacific region, uh, cooperatives in most countries of the Asia and Pacific region, a pa Pacific region may countries at the end, New Zealand, Kiribati, uh, Vanuatu, Fiji. So these countries are in the Pacific. So cooperatives in most countries of the Asia and Pacific region were established during the colonial rule. For example, in India, cooperatives were introduced under the British colonial administration, which some of us already know about. The first credit cooperative society in India was formed in 1903 to safeguard poor farmers from the harassment of money lenders. In Sri Lanka, 
cooperatives were promoted by the British administration to train farmers on scientific agricultural practices and methods, credit disbursement, and to simplify produce distribution. The first organized cooperative in Sri Lanka was set up in 1906 by dissatisfied rural workers in Kandy area. Their refusal to go to private money lenders saw the formation of the Dambara Credit Cooperative Society. In Indonesia, uh, the cooperative movement was introduced during the Dutch occupation. The first cooperative, the Bank of Civil Servants, which is now called the BRI Bank, was established in 1896 to address indebtedness of citizens to money lenders. Cooperatives in Malaysia were introduced by the British government in 1907 to uh, combat the problem of chronic rural indebtedness and deficit spending among wage earners in the places of employment. Uh, even in today's advanced countries like Singapore, uh, jo advanced countries and just Singapore, yahan tak, un countries may be British colonial authorities ke wajay se hi cooperative movement bana. Unne so pachis mein Singapore mein pehla cooperative ki stapna hoi thi. Aur uh, jo workers the wahan ke industrial uh, workers the, unko uh, funds dene ke liye, unko peso se sahayata karne ke liye, unki financial needs ko meet karne ke liye, wo cooperative bane thi. South Korea mein, Dakshin Korea mein, uh, corporate, modern cooperative movement जो बना था वो जापान से जो colonial government उस टाइम की थी उन्होंने खेतीबाड़ी और credit financial sector में cooperative की स्थापना करी अगर हम Pacific side जाते हैं Australia side जाते हैं वहाँ पे भी क्योंकि uh, Britishers का influence था British colonial rule था तो Rochdale pioneer के सिद्धांतों पे uh, स्थापित क्रेडिट सोसाइटीज 1850 में ऑस्ट्रेलिया में बनी लेकिन uh, हमारे एशिया में कुछ कंट्रीज ऐसी हैं जहां पे uh, कोई कॉलोनियल अथॉरिटी थी नहीं कोई बाहर की सरकार नहीं थी और जो लोकल गवर्नमेंट थी उन्होंने ही लोगों की सहायता करने के लिए या लोगों को सपोर्ट देने के लिए फार्मर्स हो वर्कर्स हो कोऑपरेटिव्स की स्थापना करी फॉर एग्जांपल इन थाईलैंड Thailand mein uh, jo cooperatives the wo state sponsored initiative the government ne banaye the uh, influence zarur the wo colonial uh, ideology se but matlab ek top down model zarur tha state ki taraf se but aisa nahi hai ki colonial government ne banaya wahan pe bhi uh, chote chote gaon mein credit cooperative movement start hua wajah wo hi thi ki farmers ko karz se bachana hai nepal mein jab rana oligarchy 1951 mein uh, rana kingdom ka jab rule uh, khatam hua the modern cooperative uh, societies uh, apne nepal mein banni shuru hui chitwan district mein to uh, 1954 mein credit cooperative with limited liability ek bana bakhan credit cooperative in chitwan district of nepal aur ye sarkar ne isliye banaya tha kyunki unko flood relief aur resettlement to hum जब ये हिस्ट्री uh, समझ रहे हैं तो uh, इसका मतलब एक मेन पॉइंट ये है कि कोऑपरेटिव्स पीपल सेंटर्ड बिजनेस एंटरप्राइज है और ये उतने ही समय से इन कंट्रीज में है जितने समय से ये कंट्रीज या तो इंडिपेंडेंट है या ये मॉडर्न एरा की कंट्रीज हैं चाहे वो इंडोनेशिया हो थाईलैंड हो इंडिया हो जापान हो साउथ कोरिया हो और कोऑपरेटिव्स की हिस्ट्री अगर हम पढ़ते हैं तो हमें पता चलता है कि कोऑपरेटिव्स की स्थापना लोगों की डेवलपमेंट से काफी हद तक जुड़ी हुई है और नेशन स्टेट से भी चा, मतलब चाहे कोऑपरेटिव मूवमेंट कॉलोनियल सरकार लाए हो चाहे वो वर्ल्ड वॉर की वजह से आया हो चाहे वो नेशनल इकॉनमी में चेंजेस के वजह से आया हो कोऑपरेटिव्स शुरू से ही एक नीड बेस्ड मॉडल रहा है और आ, समय समय पर उसकी ये जो न, आ, मतलब उसने मतलब टाइम की जो चुनौतियां होती हैं उस पे वो खड़ा होता रहा है uh, 20th सेंचुरी में साउथ uh, कोरिया में जो कोऑपरेटिव बने थे वो आज भी बहुत हद तक रूरल एंड अर्बन इकॉनमी को सपोर्ट करते हैं जापान में भी uh, मतलब अर्ली uh, 1800s में कोऑपरेटिव्स बन गए थे एंड अभी भी उसकी रूरल इकॉनमी एग्रीकल्चर फिशरीज फॉरेस्ट्री सेक्टर में कोऑपरेटिव्स 
बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग है जापान में इन सम कंट्रीज कोऑपरेटिव्स टुडे कंट्रीब्यूट मोर देन 10% ऑफ द जीडीपी सच एज इन न्यूजीलैंड कोऑपरेटिव्स कंट्रीब्यूटेड अबाउट 19% टू द टोटल जीडीपी इन 2018 and in thailand they contributed about 13% in 2017 however regardless of the economic classification in a country whether it's super advanced or developing countries continue to benefit from the presence of cooperatives that have the capacity and experience in reaching out to masses marginalized and most vulnerable and in some countries cooperatives are officially recognized as third pillar in national development policies along with the public and private sector and some have even been uh, given importance in the national constitution such as that of nepal and iran uh, two new kinds of cooperatives that are coming up these days uh for example inspired by fair trade and uh, sdg sustainable development goals there is a fair bnb cooperative in europe uh some people here might have heard about airbnb so on similar lines there is a fair bnb cooperative in europe now fair bnb started its journey in 2016 as a movement seeking to create a just alternative to existing home sharing platforms it is a workers cooperative operating in the tourism sector so like other platforms just like airbnb they ask for a fee for bookings but unlike others they transfer 50% of the fees to community projects in the host area with the goal to redistribute wealth and create jobs in japan there is a cooperative called agurilin it's a bio diesel fuel plant which is managed cooperatively and employs young people with mental disabilities special needs and those who find it difficult uh, those who find it difficult to be socially involved so it's a worker cooperative but they employ young people who have uh, mental disabilities in indonesia there is an incubator for cooperative startups called inno circle initiative they encourage youth to hone their innovative business ideas and collaborate with each other indonesia as we know is an emerging center for entrepreneurial growth and startups and has the fifth highest number of startups in the world inno circle offers co-working space to young uh, cooperative entrepreneurs mentors and connects them with investors founders government academicians to create products and services that have either economic or social impact uh they focus on promoting worker owned cooperatives among the youth in their country and so far they have incubated 20 cooperative startups that are engaged in home delivery of goods home delivery of vegetables book rentals and mobile library uh in south korea freelance cooperatives are another type of cooperatives that are coming up lately they are established by lecturers coaches consultants it developers scientists researchers artists theater freelancers reporters storytellers photographers movie staff and writers and i would like to highlight one of the advantages of freelance cooperative is that you know they are working as individuals but because they are a cooperative they get to exchange information they get to exchange resources for example if i am a lecturer or a researcher but i am either i don't have expertise in one field or i don't have the time so i will connect the second researcher with the project so the second researcher gets benefit out of it so there is no like selfishness involved here um in singapore there is a running hour cooperative which is an inclusive running club and it provides and promotes support to people with special needs through physical recreation and mainly running it provides them with an opportunity to interact with the uh, peers ordinary youth and adults and establish social networks the main business activities of running our cooperative is event management uh, conducting integration workshops with 
corporates uh, organizing organizing national races providing fitness instructors for visually challenged students in schools now uh, the reason why i have highlighted these uh, modern sort of examples is to show that cooperatives today exist in all fields and are not limited to traditional sectors such as agriculture fishery dairy forestry housing the existence of cooperatives in a particular business area is dependent on certain important factors i would like to highlight these uh, factors they are not exhaustive in nature but they are important first of all we should understand that cooperatives is a need based enterprise uh, the primary goal of a cooperative is to serve its members the model can either be a for profit model or a social model but the idea is to serve members and because members are the center one has to take note of who these members are who these people are where they are from whether rural or urban or peri urban what they do uh, and what they want to do now for example after covid 19 workers in the informal sector or services sector have been hit badly now can we think of creating promoting cooperatives in the informal sector or services sector that's one point the second important factor is education information and training of cooperatives now i finished school and college many years ago but i did not hear or learn about cooperatives at all in my school or college so one of the factors that is important for cooperatives to come up is education information and training of uh, on cooperatives third point which is very important is laws and policies supporting cooperatives for example in south korea uh, the framework act on cooperatives 2012 it's a new act allows five people to form a cooperative and three cooperative organizations to form a federation in singapore also five people can form a cooperative but in india the minimum membership to form a primary cooperative varies from state to state which i am sure you know that in india every state has its own state cooperative act now in india <coughs> 10 members are minimum 10 are required uh for a primary cooperative in gujarat karnataka maharashtra odisha sikkim tripura up west bengal in kerala and tamil nadu i think 25 people are required in rajasthan 15 people are required in mp 20 and in jammu kashmir 100 for primary credit and 50 for non credit so the minimum membership criteria only is so tough that sometimes it gets difficult to mobilize so many people so uh, in some countries like malaysia other forms of entrepreneurship such as social enterprise startups are gaining popularity among young people why because there is a lot of funding opportunity available there are a lot of investors sitting to invest funds government policies are supportive and in general there is more education and awareness about social enterprises and startups among youth the reason why i wanted to mention this point is that even in india young people are more aware about social enterprises startups even ngos uh, which are working in the rural or urban spaces when they you know for livelihood projects they either will prefer an fpo or they will prefer a social startup social enterprise so because there is more education and awareness and cooperatives for some reason is considered to be an outdated old fashion model so all these realities do exist and i want to upfrontly make a note of it but this is not to demotivate don't demotivate anyone who is interested in cooperatives and the movement in general also i would like to emphasize that one can contribute towards the movement in many ways one way of course is to form new cooperatives create new cooperatives but the other way is to join existing cooperatives the third way is to provide uh, products and services that are of need to cooperatives such as technological solution 
other ways are uh, to to be involved in the movement is doing research on cooperatives providing education on cooperatives doing policy advocacy work providing a uh, mentorship incubation support to cooperate for cooperatives uh, exploring funding opportunities for cooperatives and helping cooperatives writing uh, you know uh, your funding applications development funding so how to get involved in the movement there are a lot of options it need not only be ki humko that we have to create new cooperatives to generate livelihoods livelihoods can be generated through other options also now uh, i would like to highlight how to get uh, involved with us with ica so uh, we do a lot of programs and we come up with lot of tools which uh, you and even action aid can use in the future first is our website icaap.coop uh if you want to know more about the international cooperative movement we have been doing this research on creating country snapshots so uh, profiles of countries where we have studied the history evolution of the cooperative movement latest trends and have covered uh, interesting case studies for different countries we have snapshots of 25 countries on our website so that is one and uh, the other way how you can be updated about our activities and programs is to follow us on social media uh, we are very active on instagram facebook twitter so usually when we have open events like uh, uh, the youth summit or uh, sorry i missed one event actually which is uh, young scholars workshop and uh, so this workshop is basically young students young faculty members who are just starting off in their research career they need some hand holding on how to publish how to get recognized etc etc so every year in asia pacific we have a research conference where we hold a one day workshop where these young people are mentored on uh, publications research writing skills etc so uh, so we have uh, uh, the people here can follow us on social media so that whenever we we make these announcements they can uh, you know make use of them so i'm coming towards the end now uh, i would like to note that i did not cover specifically cooperative identity which comprises of the definition seven principles and values of cooperatives because i would like to encourage you all to go to our ica website ica.coop to global office website and download the statement of cooperative identity and guidelines and you go home you read them so that you can you know develop and strengthen your knowledge on cooperatives these two documents need a very um, a very serious reading and they are very helpful in informing people what these seven principles mean how can they be implemented in uh, real and practical life uh, the last statement of cooperative identity was uh, amended in 1995 and in 2015 uh, the guidance notes were released to explain what these uh, principles are and embedded in you know different contexts cooperatives have one face in the sense we are we have a common definition no one can say agriculture cooperative is defined in any other way or worker cooperative or a fishery cooperative or a technology cooperative the definition of cooperative remains same the seven principles remain same all over the world and the values on which and so these seven principles and the values of self help mutuality etc they are internationally agreed by more than 300 cooperatives worldwide so it becomes more like a global uh, consensus in the world that is one the other is you must have seen coop logo or on website dot coop that is our face that is our image so and this this identity this you know this uh, uh, visible identity does not change irrespective of national boundaries if you go to maldives if you go to france 
USA, it will remain the same. So we stand as a movement together and no other business enterprise uh, can say such a thing for themselves.